www.meetradio.com. Hello again, everybody. This is Joe Larson, and you're watching the Five More Five on Racing Show. Welcome, welcome to another week um, of, of of racing and, and talking about racing. And uh, again, I want to take a moment. To, I want to thank the the folks who helped make our 200th anniversary show uh, uh, very special to me. And, and, and WJ, MyRacesNews.com, Walter Johnston, Marty Himes from the Himes Museum of Racing Nostalgia, and and Reverend. Uh, and Pastor Scott Craniac from the Center Reach Bible Church, also the pastor, uh, the racing chaplain, I should say, of the Racing with Jesus Ministries on Long Island. And uh, for those of you who missed it, you missed a good one. It was two. Actually, we did two weeks in a row. You missed a, a, a good one. Uh, go into the archives in radio.com and check it out. Um, it was a good show. We had some good conversation. Uh, and it's always interesting that, to talk to Marty Himes because the, the, the wealth of knowledge that that man has about racing, not only on Long Island, but throughout the country, is, is just incredible. And, and again, uh, the, the stuff that he's accumulated and acquired over the years in his racing museum, uh, when, when, as he said in the show, it all started with an old trophy that he brought in and, and it just, just snowballed from there. Um, to sit and, and talk racing and, and talk drag racing with, with uh, Pastor Scott and how he got involved with the uh, oval track racing and, and becoming the, uh, the Long Island chaplain um, through the Long Island, uh, I'm sorry, with the Racing with Jesus Ministries. So uh, it, was, it was a good two weeks. It was a good, 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 good time. Um, again, if you missed it, you might want to go into the archives and check it out because it was a, we had some nice discussion. We did it in Studio A. In the, in the living room setting type of thing, den setting, and um, it was really good. And I got, of course, I want to thank the, the staff of InRavio for all their hard work and dealing with me and trying to make that right and dealing with the people that were in the studio, uh, moving chairs and moving pictures and, <laughs> and everything else and, and, and somebody moving it back. And, but it was good. And, and again, I want to thank everyone. I want to thank you folks because you know, I come here every Monday night and we talk racing. And, and sometimes it's about what, what went on, sometimes it's about what's going on, and sometimes it's about what we'd like to see go on. And um, I enjoy doing this, and, and obviously you can, folks keep coming back, so you enjoy doing this as well. But uh, it, it, was, it was a good time. But anyway, racing season is a full form. It's, it's, it's happening all over the place, all over the United States, and, and some tracks started early in others, and some tracks uh, just opened up. But, you know, it, the spring hasn't been that good to us here in the Northeast, and, and, and I can't speak for the Southeast or the Midwest or the Northwest or the Southwest, because I'm not there, but it, it's been cold, it's been wet, um, but you know what? The fans are troopers. The fans wait all winter long. They, they cannot wait to go racing. They can't wait to, to sit in the stands and watch the races. They can't wait to go meet up with their favorite drivers, even the drivers and the teams, and I've always said this. You know, there's, there's people that last night are racing whether it's September or October, that last night, whenever it is, you know, you don't see those people. You say, all right, see you, see you opening day, and oh, keep in touch, I went, and they don't. But then what happens is opening day comes, it's like you just saw them yesterday. And, and that's what it's all about, the racing family. And, and we talked about that on, on the anniversary show, how the racing family, you can beat and bang and push and shove and, and grind, and the sparks are flying on the racetrack. Even get out of your cars and, and, and go toe to toe and, and have one of those heated discussions, and uh, you know, and, and, and maybe you might want to you know bang your, your head against somebody's helmet, or maybe they're banging you in the head with their helmet. But it, that stuff happens. But then it's over, and you go during the week and you help them fix their cars, or you go during the week or you go out to dinner and you hang out. And that's that's 
the part of racing that a lot of people don't see, especially from the fans. I call them fence grabbers. The people aren't the fence, you know, holding on, you know, to the chain link fence and, and the turns. You know, the fence grabbers. They, 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 they don't see that part of the racing, and they don't see the Monday through Friday in the race shops trying to make it happen, putting these cars back together, building these cars, what it entails. And, uh, and that's one of the things that I, I, I think we need to, to stress here, because what you have is, is nobody's making money in this sport. From the, from the Sprint Cup level down, nobody's really making money here, um, you know, especially in the weekly guys. I, I don't know how some of these classes do it, how they keep coming back week after week, you know, getting a set of tires for six, seven, eight hundred dollars $800, you know, and, and, and realizing a small payoff, and, and then something breaks, and they got to go to their local parts guy, and the money that is spent on just on parts alone, and this is the stuff that just normal maintenance. That's not the, the stuff that's uh, you know broken because some somebody put you in the wall or you got involved in a ra in a wreck and you got caught up, or the knuckleheads decide the race is over and they're gonna you know add it to the car tonight a demolition derby between two idiots or three idiots or four idiots even, and, and I do call them idiots. Um, you see a lot of that. You see a lot of that happen, especially in the weekly racing series. Where, where the, the, you know what, the, the tempers just flare. And, and, and don't get me wrong, and I know some of you folks out there know me pretty well, and I was one of those guys. I was one of those guys that, you know, I, I'd lose my head a little bit. And um, you, know, you, you learn over time that that doesn't solve anything. And, 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 and I was such a guy, if a guy bumped me the wrong way in a racetrack, I, I was going to get him back and, 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 and double. And, uh, you know, and it took a lot of years, and it took you know, it took a big wreck um, to to show me that you know what, let's just ride these races out. Nobody has to win on lap one, and 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 the last couple of races I had were some extra distance races, and, and although it was in a, in a, in a truck, um, I finished, and and <laughs> that's half the battle. Finishing, you got to finish us. You got to be there at the end. And then, then you worry about where you're going to finish. And, and one of the things I've, I've taught people, I've driven for me, or, or tried to teach, you know, it's, it's a step. Let's make steps. Let's take these baby steps. You know, the first goal is to qualify. Okay, now you've qualified. Now what do you got to do? Now the next goal is to finish the race. Right? You've done that. Now the next goal is maybe pass some people, legitimately pass. You know, you could start 20th in, in a feature event, and drew attrition just riding around, you know, finished 12th because you avoided direction, you hung out, and all that kind of good stuff. But now what you want to do is you want to pass some cars. Now you've passed some cars. Now you want to now you want to get a top 10. Now you want to get a top five, maybe a top three, and you want to go for that win. And an old time racer told me, you know, sometimes you got to lose a couple before you win one. And you know that first win, that first victory that that a, that a competitor gets. That driver, he rem or she remembers that for the rest of their life, that first win. Now, I never experienced that. I never had a win as, as, a, as a driver, and I, and I never had a win as a car runner, at least not a feature event win anyway. But I've been involved with teams that have had multiple wins at, at just about every level of the sport, the weekly series and touring series, and, and even you know, in, in, in champ karts and go-karts, you know, not only on Long Island, but down in New Jersey as well. And, and it's... It's something that stays with you, and, and I had a driver drive me one time, and, and my goal that year was is to go for the, believe it or not, go for the championship, <clears throat> and, and, and the driver wanted wins, and I said, you know, yeah, there's, there's a list of who won what race, how many races, and you know, who won 110, and who won 97, who won 62, who won three, who won two, and, but in the racing programs, when they list the champions, they list the year and the champion. And it's easier to find your name in that list than it is to find your name in how many wins you got. So we had a little difference of opinion on it. Not that it was a bad difference of opinion, but that driver says, listen, I've tasted winning, and I want to win. And you know what? I, I thought about that, and I had to respect that, because I, 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 I never had that. I never had to win. I've been on championship teams, don't, don't get me wrong. Um, but I, I never tasted a win, and, and, and maybe that's, that was our difference. But again, looking back, looking back, you know, I raced because somebody told me I couldn't. 
when I first got involved. And, and I raced because I wanted to have fun. I wanted to go out and I sat in the grandstand. I'm like, wait, I could do what he does. You know, little did I know that I couldn't. But, <laughs> but we, you, know, you go out and, and you, you make it happen and you give it your all and you try your best and you got people helping you, whether it's sponsors or crew members or, or just you know, somebody that just made sandwiches so you had something to eat at the racetrack. And, and that's what's missed. And, and today, in today's racing environment, you, you see families. And, and I wrote an article in a, in a program one time years ago in, for, the, for the Suffolk Association, a figure eight race, and about families in racing, at least in the figure eight thing here on Long Island. And, and it was, I was amazed at the family involvement. When I say family, I'm talking sometimes, in, in some cases, third generation, father, son, grandson, you know, cousins, uncles, brothers, nephews, sisters, um, nieces, nephews, it, it, the family involvement. And when you, and I look back on that, I look back and you know what, you know, it's funny and, and, and I say this, time heals most wounds. Time heals most wounds. And when you, you look at that, you know, and, and it, it's kind of funny. I can remember the nights going into the garage to work on a car and, and, and be ticked off at the world and, and ticked off at the guy that wrecked me, yet the guy shows up to help me fix it. All right, my car is all done. What do you need? And that's your racing family. And people don't understand that. It took me a long time to learn that, you know. Even in the, in the grandstand, on, on the fan side, and, you know, the other side of the fence, so to speak, you know, that, that the group that, you know, I, I, I can remember going to, to Riverhead Raceway in 1975, driving there for the first time, then down, it took me forever to get there from Babylon. And, and I, I just wanted to grandstand, I sat down and somebody come up to me and said, you're in my seat. I didn't know there were reserved seats. That's what I said to the person. And the person says to me, no, I, I've been sitting in this seat forever. That's my seat, you need to move. I'm going to move. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm the stranger, so I, I move. But when you look around at any racetrack, you see the same people sitting in the same seat week after week, year after year, and they just get older and older and older. And, and because that's, as, as it's been put to me by somebody, that's what we do. And, and, and you know what? I, I, I'm not as involved as I used to be. Um, racing wise, and, and that's for a, a bunch of reasons. But, and, and we'll talk about that one day in a rant. <laughs> but <laughs> but <laughs> I, I, I was never really, and, and it came out in the anniversary, I was never really a big race fan per se. I wasn't into modifieds, believe it or not, because I was into figure eights. And, you know, when I was a kid growing up, yeah, there was, what the ice of Speedway, they had two divisions figure eights, modifieds. Show started at 7.30, was over by 11, it was great. And that included heat races. The heat races started like 7.30. And there was so many cars back then, and, and you just watched the modifiers. I remember when the modifiers would come out, they were so loud, they didn't have mufflers. You could hear them for miles. And I can remember sitting with my grandfather and, and holding my ears. And, and it turned out to be, that just made it worse. Because then when you took your fingers out of your ears, it was just even louder. But you know, you, you look back then, and, and and I wasn't like I said, I wasn't a big race fan. Yeah, I, I liked watching it on Ride World of Sports and, and 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 watching Richard Petty tear up everybody and win all those races, and 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 and, and Maurice Petty and, and the Allison Gang at, at Isa Speedway duking it out, and you know, outside the press box, you know, it was it was a fun time. It was good, but uh, anyway. Uh, Beautiful for saying NASCAR has done three wide for 90% of the race. And the last time it was in single file. What a joke. Wow. Um, I guess that's because of restricted play racing. We're going to take a break and we come back. We're going to talk about Talladega. My thoughts on Talladega, one of the places I'd love to go to in, in, in the future. But when we come back, we'll talk. Christmas Dick and if in radio.com spots you at an event wearing this bracelet, they will give you a hundred dollars. 
The world of advertising has changed. Radio, TV, and newspaper revenues have declined drastically. Why? Because businesses have realized that advertising return on investment isn't what it used to be. So what can we do about it? Well, that's easy. Advertise online. Own a local restaurant, real estate agency, or even a national retail chain? Whatever your business, Inravio can get your message out there. And we can do it at a fraction of the cost. Call today and see the difference for yourself. This isn't TV. This isn't radio. This is Inravio.com. And I'm Commander B. Hawkins. And I'm Marshall We're uh, some of the proto men. If we see you without this bracelet, we get punched in the d But if you have this bracelet from inradio.com, you can win 100 bucks. Put one of these on, or else. For over 60 years, Hanson Carpet has put the customer first, providing only the finest quality products and service. And Hanson Carpet is so much more than just carpet. We also carry a wide selection of window blinds and shades, and our licensed and insured technicians can service any of your flooring or window covering needs. Browse our huge selection of laminate, carpet, linoleum, vinyl, and tile. Stop by our showroom today or visit HansonCarpet.com. No matter what your project, Hanson Carpet has got you covered. Hey, we're back. As you see, there's a person next to me, Kevin I Basic, know. Long Island Ephus Beat. Welcome. <laughs> Kevin has come on as our, our, I guess, cameraman, I guess. I guess a so. videographer. Uh, we'll be traveling to racetracks. Can't wait for this Saturday. I'm all yeah. psyched. Hey, yeah. yeah, we're going to do some, some traveling, do some interviews, do some filming, some taping, and, and, and have some fun. Because that's what it's all about. Racing is about fun. And you know, somebody once, a wise man once said to me, Joe, when it stops being fun, go do something else. Now I've been doing it. I've been going to the races semi-religiously. You know, when I say going, I, I don't go to my local racetrack, but I go to races. You didn't go last Saturday. Uh, we that, we I, went bowling. You know, you know, <laughs> it'll be a long time before I go to that place. Right. But anyway, um, but it, it's, I've been doing this. And, and somebody asked me today, one of my customers came in and said, you know, how long have you been doing this? And I said, I've been doing this. I, I went to my first race as a, as a kid, six, seven years old, in 1965, but I didn't really start going semi-regular until mid-70s, like 73, 74, and then when I got my license, I was, for years, I was like there all the time, and um, uh, it, it, was, it was good, it was good, I had fun, and, and I, you get these, these the memories, and, 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 and I'm going to talk about that before I get into this Talladega thing. The, the memories that I, I, I look back, and, and there's, there's races I remember that stand out in my head from Isis Speedway with Jimi Hendrix and Charlie Gizambach, um, you know, beating and banging, you know, coming from the back with the, the old handicapping system was based on money earned. Yeah, you know? that was good racing back and then. There was great racing back then. And we all had respect for one another. Yeah, and I come up with the announcer, Larry Mans was saying, you know, when, when the Modifieds are lined up on the front stretch for the introductions, because they always did introductions to the, to the cars, I remember him saying, and it, this is going back to like, you know, 35 years ago, he would say, on that racetrack right now, there's a, over a quarter of a million dollars worth of equipment, because the cars back then were around 10 grand. 10 grand, and, and they had decent purses back then, you know, you, you can make a living and pay your bills, yeah, you know, right. racing. You know, now you, you, it's just impossible. You know, you, 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 you put a field of 20 modifieds on, on your weekly racetrack. Well, today, 
And you know, and that's why that's that's like there's like a couple of million dollars there. You know, fifty thousand. Hey, well, we're going on Saturday in Mahoning Valley. They run it for three thousand dollars to win for a hundred lapper. Yeah. And those are mostly the ROC modified well, guys. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I don't know, but uh, it, it's it's it's. You know, you look at purses, and, and I can remember looking at purses from, from the, the 70s, and the purses at a lot of the, the, the weekly tracks were a lot bigger then than right. they are today. And, and I don't understand that because you know, the pit fees to get in are, I can remember paying five bucks to get in the pits at ISO. And, and right. I remember when it went to $10, and, and, and you know, they're like, wow, $10 to get in the pits. But you, you made the money back, even yeah, if right. you didn't qualify, you know? Right. But uh, I don't know. And Cutie Foof is asking about your Z28. It's doing good. You wrote in it. What wrote do you think? in it today. A nice new paint job. It's looking good. You know, yeah, it looks good. Yeah. and shiny. Take it to the PA Saturday. You know, but uh, but it's 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 just it's just not the same as it was years ago. Yeah, I remember like the driver introductions. They got into their cars and all that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I remember uh, all those guys: Charlie J and Mousy Kempster and Gary Winners. And, Party tapping. I can name them all. Teddy was Nosky. Yeah. You yeah, know, it's, it, it's, it was different. Yeah. You know, Eddie Brunhutzel Sr. Right. You know, George. George, yeah, the old man. You know, yeah. the old guy. Yeah. Back his in old the Mustang day, he had. You know, when modifieds were modifieds. Right, regular car, you, you just know? converted over. Took um, a 57 Chevy chassis you know, or an International Scout chassis. Yeah. Put the thing upside down, put a yeah. cage around it and go you racing. Know? You know, Tom Baldwin with his Falcon. I remember the 747, the Falcon that he had yeah, when yeah. I was a kid. And I was like, why does he have that? But back then, you, you used what you had. You know what? I think that old Falcon was Georgie Tett's car at one I think, time. Yeah. I think so, yeah. Yeah, he bought, got it from Georgie Tett. Maybe. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't know. Can't verify that. Yeah, All I know is his coupes down south at Ray Abraham's uh, museum. Yeah. But, uh, you know, back in the day. But anyway, Talladega. I watched the Arca race on Saturday, and, and I'll tell you what, it was a pretty good race in and there, and, 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 but what troubled me with, with the Arca, and it seems like any time the Arca cars are on a super speedway, it's more of a race for the fans because they tear up a lot of stuff. And uh, yeah. one of the guys uh, was, was in a bad wreck, and I was watching, and I was, I was a little concerned, and Brad Smith was his name, Brad Smith, uh, he hit the, the wall a ton. Brad Smith, he's recovering from injuries sustained in Saturday's ARCA race at Talladega. Smith, 46, from Shelby, Michigan, was in uh, the lead draft, not the, uh, the lead draft, when he hit a spinning car and it bounced him. I mean, he went airborne, bounced, 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 hit the grass, launched, bounced, and he hit an inside retaining wall a ton. But Joe, I think he got out of the car himself. He, he did, but he had ankle injuries, leg right. injuries, back injuries. He, I mean, he's recovering. Tough old guy, but it, it, it took a while when, for them to get him. There was fire involved. Uh, right. That was some... That was, that what do you mean, that pit road fire? No, when he hit the wall. He oh, was, right. When he was airborne, it, right. it must have broke something that, that caused fire. Probably an oil line or something. So, it, but, but I look at these Arca cars, and, and maybe They're old uh, cup cars. Yeah, but they don't belong on a super speedway. Because they tear up so many of the cars. You know, you look at the race at Daytona, they tore up all this stuff. They look at Talladega, they tore up all this. Why are none of their other races televised? Because the other races are like normal races. On short tracks. Yeah, they, they're not tearing things up and destroying cars because the advertisers on, on the TV say people want to see the wrecks. And that's why they put them out there like that. And, I'm not one for that, I, you know. I'm, I'm not. I'm, I don't go for the for the wrecks. I don't. Maybe no, I when don't. I was a kid, oh that guy crashed. Oh, it was cool, you know. But you know, after you've been in a wreck, wrecks aren't cool. They're just not. I love the old figure eights doing the wreck. Oh yeah. man, you used to have forty of them out there. Holy well, I, Christ! I, I remember, and I, oh. and I know I say this every once in a while. I can remember at Isa Speedway, and it wasn't Championship Day. It was a regular night. I was always in the Conzi, always. Right. And, and back then, they lined up on the backstretch. They went to three and four. Ray Mortorano dropped the green. You weren't racing. I'm, I'm just barely on the racetrack at the ramp. I started 33rd in the Conzi. Wow. Now, they already qualified 20 cars because we started 24. It's at ISO Speedway. They already qualified 20 cars. So there's two Conzi's. 
I'm 33rd in one of them. So there's another 66 cars that didn't make the show. That's 86 figure eight cars. Wow. At Ice Speedway. Yeah, I remember and, those days. And I'm like, and my friend Bill, my friend Bill Stock, a long time friend and, and crew chief for my daughter and, and helped me out over the years. He says to me, Joe, they're taking two. Why are you bothering? Get I some said, time. Because I want to race. race. I, I came here to race. So I ran, you know, 20 laps of practice, 10 lap heat race, 10 lap Conti, loaded up and, and went and watched. But I had fun, you know? Yeah, and I had right. fun. I, I, I remember talking to a guy who was in it for the same thing back in the day, had fun, and then he started winning races and finishing up front, and now he's battling for a point championship, you know, for a point title. And any time he had a bad night, he'd get out of the car and, and people would be all, what happened, what's wrong with the car? Blah, blah, blah. And it took the fun out of it for him. It hey, I, I remember helping Billy Szymanski, Freddie Lamac, you know, with, with their figure eight cars. There was yeah. another guy from Port Washington that had a figure eight car that lived, uh, you know, up, up the road from me and stuff. He used to drive. He, I, I, I think a, an old Dodge Dart or something like mm -hmm. that, a 62 Dodge Dart or something like that he yeah. had. It was a white car, I remember that one. He was from Port Washington, yeah. You know, it, it, and, and it's funny, you look back and you, you know, some of the, 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 the cars that they had then, the 56 Fords, the 57 Chevys, right, right. The, the, the Plymouths, and the, you, know, you, you look back at the cars. The cars had class back then, the cars. even though by mid-season they were beaten, banged, and dinged. You know, and, and some of the guys, I can remember Sammy Atkins. Oh, yeah, the 47, yeah, yeah, right. His car was immaculate week after week. Hey, he had a driving week. school, had to look yeah. good. Sammy yeah. Atkins from Babylon, no? Yeah, right down the block from where I Babylon. grew up. He was like, Is that still there? Is no, he... the driving oh. school's not there. But, you know, there was a, that, that guy. I remember his cars were immaculate back in there. Andy Rohde, yeah, he had right. those old Plymouths with the fins, you know? Who's the other guy, the Italian oh, guy man. with the two flags? Luigi, the Luigi Tampico. Yeah, right. Yeah. You know, and you had the American flag and the Italian flag on his yeah. Who's the guy with the 75 with the skunk? Uh, Bobby Sullivan. Oh, Bobby wow. Bobby Sullivan, man, I'm, yeah, yeah. I'm showing my age, you know? Oh, I remember man. the names. Me like, too. Don't ask me who raced Saturday. I can't tell you, but I can tell you raced 40 oh, yeah, years ago. right. But uh, yeah, it was, it was the good old days. And, yeah, I used and, to go uh, from the early, late 60s, early 70s. Yeah, yeah. mid 60s, I think. I didn't we go went. a lot in the 60s, maybe a few handful of times. I remember the, the, those times very well, but uh, I didn't really start going kind of regular until 73 ish. And then once I got my license in 75, I was like a regular. I remember yeah, fighting yeah, with right. my boss to have Saturday nights off and Friday nights. Uh, the right, to go to Freeport, yeah. Uh, now, Freeport, I only went to go, I only went to Freeport once. To, to race. I went oh, there to watch a, a few track. times. But they let the figure eight guys run with their uh, yeah, late model guys. guys. Well, yeah. that's, that's, it was, that was funny. Cool. I was at my friend's house. I wasn't, you know, like, I think I just graduated high school. I was at my friend's house, and uh, some guy was working on his father's car in the driveway. And I said, and my friend's father said to me, that guy races cars. And you might know him. I said, oh, yeah, it's Ronnie Gibbs. Oh. So, I, and he was a teacher at West Ballon. So, and he goes, I, I guess, no, I don't know him. So we're talking, and well, it turns out he raced Freeport and I ran ISO, you know. And um, so we got to talking, and he got suspended at, at I think Freeport. I seen Ronnie Friday night. Did you? Out east yeah. at the uh, Brickyard. Oh, okay. But yeah, you know, yeah. Didn't he run a Charger car, too? His son ran a Charger oh, car. Oh, the Charger. Oh, okay. Yeah, his son. Yeah, yeah. And then his son moved on or moved away. All right. But, you know, I, I look back on that day, and I remember him getting suspended, and I was going to run his car, and he was going to run the figure eight car. And, but you had to get a NASCAR license. Right. He didn't want to do it. And it never materialized. But I went anyway. I went to Freeport, and I can remember, you know, the fun I had. Because I hadn't been to Freeport since the 60s. And... Uh, Ah, uh, they they had those modifiers with the small tires. I didn't really like. Yeah, it, it was kind of. Had different. those square top coupes and all that. They weren't like the regular mods with no, the sixteen inch no. tires. No, that but, still was all right though. But you know, like I said though, you, you look at the look at those days and and I look at the nowadays and and like I said, Arca, Arca, and this ain't a bash, folks. Please, you, you NASCAR spies that call up the NASCAR and say what I said. I'm not bashing. <laughs> I'm not bashing. I just don't think the ARCA cars should be on a super speedway. Just my opinion. They, they, they should be at, you know, mile and a half and under. They, I think they put on an awesome show there. Awesome. Mile and a half and under. They don't belong on 2.66 miles. Why, they race at Pocono. Yeah, but, you know, Poconos are totally different. You can go six wide down yeah, the front right, stretch. Right. It looks like spikes flat. going down. Yeah. You know, and, and, and they do. They come off the corner. They come off the corner and they, they're going like this. They're all you know, following, though. It looks like a snake. You know, for, for the draft thing, and, and, and speaking of draft, and then I know we're, we're going to go to a commercial. And, you know, this, this, somebody said earlier in the chat room, three by three, 
for most of the race, a little bit of pushing, a little bit of jockeying, and, and, and that was okay to push people. It was okay. Then as long as you didn't get aggressive. There was a spot you could push on. If you pushed anywhere other than that spot, the guys in the tower were giving you warnings. And uh, we come back. I want to talk about something I, that I was listening to. Uh, I actually had it on my Sprint phone. Um, you, you can listen to certain things. When we come back, we'll talk about that. Good. Scan off there, and we're here with Enravio. If they catch you at a show with one of these bracelets, you will win a hundred bucks. That's a lot of money. So get a bracelet. Do whatever it takes to get that. Hit them up online. advertising has changed. Radio, TV, and newspaper revenues have declined drastically. Why? Because businesses have realized that advertising return on investment isn't what it used to be. So what can we do about it? Well, that's easy. Advertise online. Own a local restaurant, real estate agency, or even a national retail chain? Whatever your business, Enravio can get your message out there, and we can do it at a fraction of the cost. Call today and see the difference for yourself. This isn't TV. This isn't radio. This is Enravio.com. Hey, I'm, I'm Raul Panther. And I'm Commander B. Hawkins. And I'm Mark Weller. We're uh, some of the proto men. If we see you without this bracelet, we get punched in the d But if you have this bracelet from nradio.com, you can win 100 bucks. Put one of these on, or else. For over 60 years, Hanson Carpet has put the customer first, providing only the finest quality products and service. And Hanson Carpet is so much more than just carpet. We also carry a wide selection of window blinds and shades, and our licensed and insured technicians can service any of your flooring or window covering needs. Browse our huge selection of laminate, carpet, linoleum, vinyl, and tile. Stop by our showroom today or visit HansonCarpet.com. No matter what your project, Hanson Carpet has got you covered. Hey, welcome back. Hey, um, back in August last summer, I, I spent a day at the Himes Museum of Racing Nostalgia. Uh, talking to some old drivers, old officials, and, and some folks that, you know, when you go back, it's, it's guys from the day, the gay, you know, I was just a kid. And uh, we're going to show one of the clips from that uh, uh, former flag man from um, Ice of Speedway and, 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 a, and a good buddy, uh, Ray Morchowano. We, we got a clip from that day. Uh, let's, let's bring it up. Yeah, I'm standing with Ray Morchowano. Did I say that right? That's close. close. <laughs> you know, from Long Island, a lot of time, guys. You know That's what I mean? That's it. You got it. Uh, that's all right. Ray, I, I'll tell you, my first memories of you, I was a little punk-nosed teenage kid at Isis Speedway, and you were in the flag stand. Mm -hmm. That's a long time ago. Well, yeah, it was a long time ago, except for I was a little punk kid when I got <laughs> into the starter stand. Did I you? was 12 years old. Wow. And I backed up Johnny Rocco. Uh-huh. All wow. right. Dominic uh, Stafford said, come here, Goomba. I got a nicer job for you. Mm -hmm. And the rest is history. We went on for years. Oh, yeah. 25 of them, to be exact. Wow. 25 years in the flakes. Eh? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. what, what are some of your best memories? Uh, probably uh, flagging some of the all-star races, mm -hmm. right? And not just at ISO, but traveling and giving out the All-Star helmets and mm -hmm. stuff like that. Some of the greatest races went to ISO Speedway. We used to have the Grand National cars there. Yes, we did back we in the We had 60s. Richard Petty when he drove, uh -huh. right? Wendell Scott, that man could put spit and glue together and make it race. Yeah. It was really good, you know? Uh, there were so many good times, but all you had to do to have a good time at ISO Speedway was no Larry Mendelson. That's it. One of the best promoters in the world. The guy cared. One of the smartest men in the world. You know, he said something to me one day, and, and I and I look at it today. 
uh, you want to make money? I says, yeah. He says, spend some, and then you'll make some. And the man was right. The man was right. He knew he knew his stuff, you know. You got to spend right? the buck to make. And sense. an inventive mind. He had, he's the one who invented demolition derby, yes, and did. you know that. Yes, I do. Uh, and about eleven different types of it to, to boot. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so, yeah, was cool. lot. You know, Iceland, like I said, was a great place. I met the nicest people, and like you know firsthand, there's no people like race people, no. and there's no party like a race party. No. Okay. No. And we've traveled all over the United States, you know. Yeah. And we've put on demolition derbies and races and everything else. Mm -hmm. Great, thank you so much. Hey, Joe, for everything. it is my pleasure. Thank you very much uh, for having me, and I really appreciate it.